And the crowds are just starting to gather here at the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Park in Oroville. Now event organizers are hoping to spread awareness over this teen's death, which many are now calling a murder which was sparked by racism. Both the Governor's Mansion and California State Railroad Museum allow visitors to step back in time and are a must-see when in Sacramento. But if a piece of history isn't what you're looking for, how about a trip to the zoo? An astonishing 100 million gallons flow from the fall every day, and it's one of California's very few waterfalls that flow all year round. By the end of the tour, you may also become a bit of a rock connoisseur, learning about everything from cave drapery and flowstone to stalactites, stalagmites, and helictites, all found right here in the caverns. And the best part of it all is that rescued animals like 10-week-old Tom the grizzly bear have a brand new home on 19 acres of green grass and rolling hills. Regardless of the reasoning for jumping in the water, all the swimmers can agree on one thing. The water is freezing. Shelters like this one are a must that will protect from the frost and wind. A mixed bouquet is popular this Valentine's Day, but roses are still a top choice. The love for them never withers away. For these young children, most of the dangers are found inside the home. The two biggest prescription medications, and household cleaning products found right under the sink. Not only are these cupcakes delicious, they're also works of art. From specialty foods to high-end gourmet treats, pet lovers are not afraid to open their wallets when it comes to man's best friend. As you can see, it's about 41 degrees here on Mangrove and Chico, and the temperature continues to lower. Now, those temperatures should rise a bit as the storms move in, but the town of Paradise is still bracing for snow, and they have their plows on standby. Now, the vigil here in Orville is just getting started. They're expecting large crowds. It's set to take about an hour long. Everyone is invited to join. Live in Oroville for CBS 12 Action News, I'm Derek Demo. That's right, Linda. It's a relatively simple process that might take up just a few hours of your day. And in the end, you can help ensure a child does not go without this Christmas. Now, the Angel Tree program helps local families in need over the holiday season and has done so for many years. And you can help by taking a tag off one of the many angel trees in your area. You then purchase the gift that is listed on the tag and return it to the Angel Tree location. It's really as simple as that. Now, I'm joined now by Captain Darren Stratton. Now, this has been going on, like I said, for several years. It's a great program, helps so many in need. And this year, the need for help is even higher, I understand, correct? Absolutely, it is. The need is very high. Uh, our contributions are down uh, across the county, certainly in Chico, about $10,000. And uh, toys are down currently from our last food, uh, from our last toy drive. We definitely need people's help. So really asking people to just pitch in, get, get in the holiday spirit, and give back to these families. It's a great program. It helps so many in this area. Absolutely, it does. Uh, we are definitely depending on this uh, community, uh, North State, to help us out again this year. And is there any sort of deadline? Obviously, you want these gifts before Christmas, correct? Uh, each Salvation Army community varies differently, but certainly here uh, in Chico, we need them no later than uh, December the 16th. Perfect. Well, Linda, you and I don't have very far to go in order to help out. We actually have an angel tree right here in our lobby. In fact, I'm going to take mine right now. There are still many left out there. And in order to find out where all the locations are, you can log on to our website, khsltv.com, and click on news links. Live in Chico for CBS 12 Action News, I'm Derek Demo. Good evening, I'm Derek Demo. Thanks for joining us. Debbie Cobb has the night off. Well, it's Christmas Day, and it's fair to say that most people have the day off of work, but there are some who spend the holiday on the clock. Chico police officers and firefighters spent the day at work today, responding to the usual calls and some specific to the holiday. Firefighters say they always respond to a few oven fires on Christmas, and police say they usually see a heightened number of family disputes during this time of the year. And although they aren't home with their family, they try to make the most of their working holiday by bringing their families to them instead. We invite our families down and we try to participate in a big meal and, and try to create the uh, home Christmas atmosphere at the fire station. Other workers today included restaurant waiters and chefs. Places like Denny's and Marie Callender's were packed with families enjoying their Christmas meal out and about. And Americans across the country packed into their churches for Christmas services today. Bidwell Presbyterian Church on West 1st Street in Chico saw more than 2,000 people attend service this holiday. The church offered four services Saturday and one this morning. Action News caught up with several churchgoers today who say they always try to attend church on Christmas Sunday. Christmas is the time that we celebrate the birth of Christ. It's more than uh, just presents. And uh, it's... Uh, um, 
it was great for us to be together as a family today and uh, attend our church and be with uh, our pastor and, and all the people and just, uh, uh, yeah, just to uh, give thanks. Families say they like to celebrate the true meaning of Christmas by attending church. Roughly 60% of Americans also say they attend some form of church services on Christmas. And troops returning home at the Army Reserve Center in Orlando, Florida, got a warm welcome from family and friends today. And for many, it's all they wanted for Christmas. Reporter Chris Trinkman has a story. A soldier who served in Afghanistan was shot at his homecoming party Friday in San Bernardino. Family members say 22-year-old Christopher Sullivan was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Police say two partygoers got into an argument and one of them opened fire at Sullivan. The gunman fled the scene. Sullivan's mother is now asking his friends and those responsible for the shooting to step forward. I want anybody who knows anything to please call the police. If you guys are really his friends, don't turn your back on him now. He really, really needs you guys. Sullivan was wounded in a suicide bombing attack last year in Afghanistan and has been recovering in Kentucky where he is stationed. He was home on leave when the shooting occurred. And at least 39 people have been killed in the terror attacks that were carried out across Nigeria today. There were multiple bombings. The first explosion struck St. Teresa's Catholic Church in Medallia, a town near Niger State. A second explosion took place near a mountain of fire in Miracles Church. Gunmen later opened fire on police guarding the area and killed one police officer. And a suicide car bomber also attacked the military in Nigeria's northeast. Two other locally made explosives were found in a nearby building and disarmed. A radical Muslim group claimed responsibility for the bombings. The presidential campaign of Newt Gingrich responded to news that the candidate will not be on the ballot in Virginia. The Republican Party of Virginia announced Saturday that Gingrich had not gotten the 10,000 signatures necessary to be on the ballot in the state's primary. Today, the Gingrich campaign called it a failed system and released a statement which read in part, Voters deserve the right for any top contender, especially leading candidates. Newt Gingrich will now pursue a write-in campaign in Virginia. And coming up next on Action News, some people choose to spend Christmas Day enjoying a good movie in front of the big screen. We'll tell you what they watched. Plus, a junior high student dedicated his Christmas to others to help make sure children don't go without on Christmas morning. Those stories and more when Action News at 6.30 returns. We stand there and heard the shots go off, look over and uh, guys walking towards him, lets off seven or eight shots. He goes down, stands over him, shoots him a couple more times, he's on the ground. That was the terrifying turn of events that took place at LaSalle's just before 11 Saturday night. This home video captured on a cell phone shows LaSalle's staff members helping gunshot victims on the ground. Police say 25-year-old Shane Michael Warner opened fire on the back patio of the popular bar. Bullets struck both 22-year-old Chico resident Sam Smith and a 24-year-old woman who was dancing near him. After the shooting, Warner took off running, but employees from the bar ran after him. The suspect was detained about a block away from the uh, bar and was taken into custody. Action News spoke with an employee from the bar off camera who said Warner and another man were denied entry into the bar several times. But when Warner tried to get in alone, he was allowed in after going through the bar's routine pat-down. Witnesses say the man Warner was with then threw him the handgun over the fence of the back patio. And the guy wanted to do something to him, so obviously it was premeditated. Friends of Smith say Warner and Smith had an altercation several weeks ago. And after Smith went down, witnesses say Warner seemed satisfied with what he had done. And the, the gentleman came up, fired three or four more shots into him, did a little victory dance, and ran out the door. Smith was taken to Inlow Medical Center with four gunshot wounds and was immediately taken into surgery. The 24-year-old female victim was shot twice in the leg, and according to police, her injuries are not life-threatening. Warner is currently being held at the Butte County Jail. And for those who lived through the nightmare... I think I'm going to take a break for a while. Yeah, I think it's just time to stay away from the downtown scene for, for a little bit. LaSalle's management posted a statement on the bar's Facebook page stating, quote, the tragic occurrence that took place profoundly saddened us all, and they are praying for the speedy recovery of the victims. In Chico, I'm Derek Demo for Action News. This seemingly quiet neighborhood in Paradise was shaken last Friday by a violent dog attack that sent one woman to the hospital with severe injuries. I heard someone saying, help, help, help. 
and screaming, just a god awful scream. And uh, immediately I took off running with my uh, mother in law trailing behind. What Paradise resident Joe Walton saw next shocked him. Three pit bulls viciously attacking one of his neighbors, Sarah Page. Page was taking in her trash can from the street when the dogs jumped over a nearby fence and attacked without warning. It kind of happened so fast, but I was able to help her with, you know, pulling a big, uh, pulling the big pit bull off. The attack quickly involved several neighbors who jumped in to fend off the dogs with sticks and pieces of wood, many even using their bare hands. In a matter of minutes, the dogs did massive damage. Paige suffered numerous bite wounds to her face and neck, along with bites up and down both arms. She's since undergone two surgeries at Inlow Medical Center, including a skin graft. Through it all, both Paige and her partner are thankful to their neighbors, which both agree saved her life. To Bethany and Joe and the people whose names I don't know but who helped out, thank you for being there and for um, kind of stepping out of yourselves into the moment and risking your lives for another human. The dogs have all been quarantined and Paradise Police are investigating the attack. Neighbors also say they have seen the dogs running loose in the area before. This is not an animal problem, it's a human problem that um, pit bulls are the result of either training or breeding and that we've really got to stop that. In Paradise, I'm Derek Demo for Action News. Right now, gyms like In Motion Fitness are packed full of people vowing to make 2012 better than 2011. And while hitting the gym is top of their list for now, it may not be in a few months. Uh, it's uh, New Year's resolution time. Everyone wants to get in here and start working out. New Year's resolutions are easy to make and they can be even easier to break. But well, that doesn't stop wishful thinkers from hitting the gym every January with plans to start the new year off right. The ebbs and flows. Stuff, yeah, it'll be packed for about a month and then it kind of mellows out afterwards. People can slack off. It's a full house at In Motion Fitness in Chico as eager New Year's revelers full of ambition add working out to their new regime for 2012. It's a common promise many make as the clock strikes midnight and welcomes in a new year. Finding an open treadmill is tough right now. The gym is packed, but the question is, how many will still be going strong in a couple of months? According to ProactiveChange.com, nearly 45% of Americans vow to make a change in the new year. But after just six months, less than half of those pledges pan out. Yeah, unfortunately, the resolutions kind of taper off in March and April. We start to see a little bit less people. But there are those who do beat the odds. People like Aaron Patania and Joy Amaro. Both agree setting workout goals for yourself that you can meet is the first step to holding true to your resolutions. I like to, to start off um, in increments like every four weeks and uh, that helps me stick to it. And just start small, you know, it makes a huge difference. Just jump on the treadmill for 20 minutes and then, you know, just gradually increase. Having too many resolutions can also keep you from achieving your goal. Studies show focusing on just one will result in greater success. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Kind of focus on yourself, focus on what you're trying to do. Some of the other top resolutions include getting out of debt, to quit smoking, learning something new, and finding a new job. CSU students are getting hit with another low blow from budget cuts, but this time the cuts will be affecting more than just the amount students will pay for classes. They'll be affecting the amount of classes students can take. The CSU has told all its campuses, including Chico, that um, we need to limit the number of units that students can sign up for in fall 2012. Budget cuts have forced universities to limit the amount of courses they can offer, which means there's less to go around. To compensate, CSUs will be putting a cap on the number of units students can take in an effort to be fair and help ensure each student gets enough classes. The cap is set at 16 units per semester. The CSU is in a situation where it has to plan for potential additional $200 million cut uh, if the governor's tax measure in November doesn't pass. There are some exceptions to the 16 unit cap at Chico State. Students with majors requiring high course loads are exempt and graduating seniors will be allowed to take extra classes if they need them to graduate. Throughout all the budget cuts the bottom line is can students get classes and graduate and their academic quality. But many students feel the state's budget cuts are lowering academic quality and costing them more money in the process. They're just 
a lot of like students who just don't want to be here for more longer than they have to since uh, tuition is so high. They're limiting the time it'll take us to get out and actually plant our feet on the ground, pay our student loans, get into the workforce, you know, and now it's going to take longer and we're going to be in debt more. And the debt could grow even higher if a solution isn't found. Unless state aid turns around, that um, even more draconian measures could have to be taken. In Chico, I'm Derek Demo for Action News.